All right. Um, I am Manslave. I run the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. Many of you, uh, many of you know me on Facebook. Um, I just figured I would make this quick screencast. I mean, you can see what time it is right here. Um, I just got to make sure that um, this works out because uh, a few people have been asking me about uh, Linux Mint with uh, Cinnamon, uh, which is my favorite user interface on that. Um, I mean, in Ubuntu, you have uh, Unity, which is uh, um, Canonical's uh, style of the uh, GNOME 3 shell environment. Well, <clears throat> Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, and then they just modify it. And I had to make sure my uh, CPU clock was, um, yeah, I got it on demand so it can clock up as high as it'll go. I mean, I can manually clock it at 1.4 gigahertz. Saves a lot of energy, uh, puts out a lot less heat. Or I can let it go all the way up to 3.8 gigahertz, or I can run anything in between. And um, this is something here that I added to uh, Linux Mint. Now, it comes standard in uh, Enlightenment DR17. And that's why I first became familiar with this and, uh, you know, your CPU governors and all that. And um, so anyway, I put in these little applets, some of these, like the restart cinnamon and then the weather. And then uh, that time date was already there. Um, and I put in the CPU thing there and then the shutdown. Um, and then I did this uh, theming on the menu. I mean, I didn't make it, but I put it in there. Um here's with with Linux Mint uh, it's just really awesome I like it and I like to make sure and have um, uh, semi-transparent menuing here where you can see through it um, but you got all your applications you can scroll through them or you got just your accessories and here's what I love about Linux so much and you know GNU Linux and most people are just not familiar with this because they're accustomed to how Microsoft Windows, you know Microsoft Windows uh, is is done where you know you go in your start menu and then all your programs they're just all in there just sporadically and they're only listed according to the company name uh, who made the software and then it's very difficult to really find things unless you're familiar but with Linux it's always been like this you know you just here's your accessories right in here you got a category for that you got a category for administration to make changes to the system here's your games um, and uh, I even got Steam and uh, read the uh, terms and all that I don't use Steam, um, no, not yet. I mean, I might try. But yeah, Steam in Linux Mint, and it's in Ubuntu, and I think you can compile it or get the package for Debian and maybe some other distros. But while that's going, um, you got your games, Matter of fact, I forgot to install a game, so I'm going to open up the Synaptic Package Manager. And this is how most people get software in Linux. And it's completely free, just in case people have never heard of it. Now, I'm sure Airhauer has, has, you know, is a bit familiar with this. I need to uh, type in. Well, here we go. Frozen Bubble. The game that I want to install. And you just you just type you just search for it um, you, you just search for what you want either the, the description or the name of the program and it finds it and then you click the check box mark for installation and then it tells you what all else it needs you select yes click apply tells you what it's gonna have to do And uh, yeah, you just wait for it, and then it'll show up in the menu here in just a moment.
It'll show up in the menu. There we go. And there it is. I need to resolve that. It was like a broken package or something. All right, you see it's installed. There we go. Valve Steam. Valve Steam running in Linux. Uh, meant for anybody who's familiar with that. Now we can play Frozen Bubble. So that's that. <clears throat> uh, okay, so you got your games, you got your graphics. Blender is supposed to be really good, like Disney Pixar, uh, you know, quality of software. Um, we got uh, Pencil, which is supposed to be pretty good, but I've never used it. Yeah, it makes stop motion animations. Uh, GIMP, which is really good. It's basically like Adobe Photoshop. You got the internet? Yep, you don't gotta guess. All your internet related stuff is here. There's your office related stuff. There's your preferences. Um, system information. Mm. Yep. Um, I got a yeah AMD Ath or AMD FX sixty two hundred. It's got six cores. Um, operating system, Linux Mint, it's got version 3.8 point you know, of the Linux kernel. The latest version of Linux Mint, um, uh, processor, okay. Some of these cores right now are clocked at the full speed of 3.8. Some of them are clocked at the minimum speed of 1.4. Just depends on uh, how much, you know, strain that my task is putting on there. Um. Sensors, okay. Um, we'll just do a quick little system tools. Um, wonder if this system monitor, yeah. Here we go. Here I am, I'm recording a full HD video, I believe. Um, yeah, and then, um, using just a little bit more than 900 megs of memory. It's about 9.4% of the actual RAM that I have in the system. And it doesn't put too much of a stress load on all these cores. Uh, and I am running Firefox with uh, Facebook and, uh, and YouTube um, while doing that. Let's see what else we got. Uh, sound and video. Audacity's really good. Uh, handbrake. I love handbrake. Oh yeah. Rip and transcode video. This software just keeps getting better. A lot of this does. Um, Kazam. I'm using it right now to screencast this thing. Caden Live is supposed to be almost, like pretty much about as good as Sony Vegas Pro. So I've heard. So I've heard anyway. 
PTV is pretty simple. It's a video editor. VLC is like really good. Um, for the people that don't know about it, it's like way better than Windows Media Player uh, for like codec and file support. Uh, the, the the reputation of VLC is that, you know, if VLC can't play your pro, uh, it, they say that if VLC can't play your file, then chances are your file is corrupted. You net boot and you could take a Linux uh, operating system from a, a disk image and just put it on a USB flash drive and boot from it. Um, so there's stuff in here, Wine, you know, run Windows programs and all that um, yeah it's pretty simple and um, as for um, these themes you can um, you can choose I got what you do is you go to um, get more uh, online and then you can uh, you can search for them if you know what their names are but I don't I just look at the screenshot and then you just literally check them like right here with a check box and um, and then you click install or update selected now what I got installed is I can go for the um, I got okay uh, you can go for the Android theme oh and there it is yeah now I don't have the uh, I don't have the wallpaper for it but here's the Android styling uh, here's Eclipse it's different. Make it look like GNOME 3. Mm, it's kind of nice. Dark Shuffle. I think I. Yeah, this one was alright. Um, Dark Glass. Okay. Dark Cold. I think I, I do like this one. Yeah, it's got transparencies to it. You can see behind this menu that there's you know this program window. This one was like what I originally had, but I think it's blue instead of green. Yeah, you see the blue highlights right there. And all that as your item goes to the menu. I mean, you can go for that if you want, but uh, I did the one where I'm using green. And uh, this is how, how simple it is. You just whatever you're interested, you can even make it look like Windows 7. You just click on this right here. You click on whatever ones are interesting to you. Um, I might click on Metro and then install or update the selected. That's how you do that. It's really, it's really great. I like Linux a whole lot. Linux Mint is great. It automatically has the codecs in there. Uh, Sync play, uh, you know, Flash like right, you know, like right from the start. Um, you know, you don't have to add in the Flash player or anything like that, and your videos play. And um, I still haven't updated this yet. Um, and yeah, so uh, yeah, Flash plays um, and you're by default just automatically out of the box. It automatically Hello, works. audience, it's about 10 10 a.m. on um, that men are typically told in society that that is the wrong thing to do and then they just modify it and I had to make sure my uh, CPU clock was um, yeah I got it on demand so it can clock up as high as it'll go I mean I can manually clock it at 1.4 gigahertz saves a lot of energy uh, puts out a lot less heat or I can let it go all the way up to 3.8 gigahertz or I can run anything in between and um, this is something here that I added to uh, Linux. 
All right. Um, I am Manslave. I run the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. Many of you, uh, many of you know me on Facebook. Um, I just figured I would make this quick screencast. I mean, you can see what time it is right here. Um, I just got to make sure that um, this works out because uh, a few people have been asking me about uh, Linux Mint. Um, and then I did this uh, theming on the menu. I mean, I didn't make it, but I put it in there. Um, here's with with Linux Mint. Uh, it's just really awesome. I like it, and I like to make sure and have um, uh, semi-transparent menuing here where you can see through it. Um, but yeah, you got all your int with uh, Cinnamon, uh, which is my favorite user interface on that. Um, I mean, in Ubuntu you have uh, Unity, which is um, um, Canonical's uh, style of the uh, GNOME 3 shell environment. Well, <clears throat> Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu Mint. Now it comes standard in uh, Enlightenment DR17, and that's why I first became familiar with this. And uh, you know your CPU governors and all that. And um, so anyway, I put in these little applets, some of these, like the restart cinnamon and then the weather. And then uh, that time date was already there. Um, and I put in the CPU thing there and then the shutdown.